uh, concerned Dr. Miskoff. It's uh, March 28, 2020. It's Saturday night, and I am um, broadcasting or vlogging uh, from my kitchen again, uh, about 7.45 p.m., and the topic, of course, is COVID-19. Uh, tonight, I'd like to start off with a fact about COVID-19, and per perhaps each night when we start the vlog, uh, we'll give one factoid about COVID-19. So the one tonight that I saw, I thank my colleagues for continuously posting um, and sending stuff, uh, but I did see this one on a shared room today uh, with healthcare providers, is that you know, everybody's concerned about whether or not this, this virus will die. It's a seasonal variant, a variation. Will it be killed off when it gets hotter out? And we don't know that right now. We, we, we're certainly hopeful that, that the heat will, will hurt the virus. But uh, what we do know is at least in a laboratory setting at 149 degrees Fahrenheit or 65 Celsius for 30 minutes, the virus is killed. So, um, you know, it, it gives some comfort when you're cooking food, obviously. I'm certainly cooking it higher than 150 degrees. Um, but, you know, again, 149 for 30 minutes. Uh, I did also see on that same uh, post that uh, some people are using this technique to sterilize their N95 masks so they can reuse them and hanging them literally inside the oven. Uh, they do recommend a higher temperature of 158 or 70 centigrade for 30 minutes in order to kill, uh, uh, to kill the virus or sterilize the mask or other, other things that um, obviously shouldn't be flammable, but at 150, 158 um, should be okay. Uh, I don't know who's going to feel too comfortable putting a mask uh, that they wore all day on COVID patients in the oven. Uh, so there was another method that was uh, recommended or at least suggested, which was to label, you know, three or four masks, one, two, three, four, and have them, you know, set aside. And on day one that you're working, wear the mask, uh, number one, on day two, number two, day three, the third mask. And, and then what you do is you just put that, that mask you wore that day aside for 72 hours and rotate the masks. And uh, it is said that, at least on uh, the mask or the surfaces, that after about 72 hours, uh, the viral load would be either not measurable or not enough to cause contamination. So you have two methods of sterilizing, uh, either heating it to uh, 158 for 30 minutes, um, but it does die at 149 or 65 centigrade for 30 minutes or just using an alternating or rotating mask schedule. Um, so tonight what I'd like to cover are the 88 trials that are currently actively recruiting. Uh, I did go to clinicaltrials.gov and um, I, I put in the search for the ones that are recruiting as of tonight. Uh, so March 28th, anybody can go on there and see this. Uh, there are other trials that have withdrawn. Uh, there are other trials that are getting ready to start, uh, well over 100 when you look at all of them. Uh, uh, and it's really quite remarkable, and it gives some comfort. I know there are a lot of anxious people out there uh, in regards to this, including myself, and it's nice to see that uh, there's many, many trials going on internationally, and this is a, a site that lists the international trials from around, from around the world. Uh, so uh, I think the one that's getting the most recent press is uh, teclizumab or Actemra. Uh, there is a, another one called uh, Cerilumab, or Kevzara. These are both uh, interleukin-6 receptor uh, blockers. So interleukin-6 is one of the cytokines that's uh, believed to be involved in the um, cytokine storm. There's uh, several others as well. And uh, Genentech makes teclizumab or Actemra. And uh, in a Chinese study, or at least in a cohort there, uh, at the peak of their epidemic, uh, before it was a pandemic, they actually gave this product, this interleukin-6 receptor blocker, uh, to uh, 20 patients, and 19 of them actually recovered and were discharged at day 14. And that's the most impressive data that we've seen. We've heard the story with hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, and many hospitals are using that cocktail. They do have now uh, certain criteria, if you will, before giving it, not just to everybody that walks in the door because of limited supplies. They are being reserved for people that are, are hypoxic or not just very mild cases, more moderate severe, and the French did have that study, and it was, you know, touted as, you know, being effective on the patients that they gave that combination to, but it was, you know, the, the ones that got that cocktail was like six patients, so it was a very, very small end number, and it's hard to power a study with an active, uh, effect, you know, effective study uh, to get results that we can trust with a number that that, which is that small. Um, but the FDA did give the green light for a phase three trial for uh, teclizumab. And so that is either undergoing or should be under uh, starting very, very soon. Um, 
Okay, so you know, with 95% of those uh, of the Chinese patients in that original uh, peak epidemic time uh, being basically cured, uh, it was promising, and therefore uh, I think that that is you know the med of the day right now, and seems to have the most promise from what we've seen. Uh, interleukin-6, again, is a cytokine, and these are monoclonal antibodies that block that receptor to make the interleukin-6 not as effective. Uh, cerilumab or Kevzara is by Sanofi, and that one is the same mechanism of action, so that should be interesting to see uh, that get off the ground, and hopefully they're producing a heck of a lot of it. I think 10,000 doses were stockpiled, and the uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Resources will allocate those 10,000 doses as well. So uh, we'll see how that goes uh, moving forward. Uh, of interest to me also and, and of the studies was natural killer cells. And I've seen this story with my allergic, uh, I'm sorry, eosinophilic asthma patients, uh, venralizumab or Fisenra, uh, in their mechanism of action. Very similar with a monoclonal antibody, but rather than attacking IL-6, uh, we're looking at something that's uh, on the uh, interleukin-5 basis here. So you have the eosinophil, and uh, this will actually go to uh, that receptor on IL-5 uh, receptor and block it. And then natural killer cells chemotactically are brought in um, uh, from an afucosylated uh, monoclonal antibody. It attracts them in that environment. So I, I haven't, uh, it's not the first time I've heard the natural killer story. You learn about natural killer cells in, in basic um, uh, science stuff, uh, uh, even when we're... Uh, um, uh, just studying it uh, even before I got to medical school. But now it's interesting to see that they're having a natural killer cell against the ACE2 receptor, which is how uh, we've mentioned before, and it's been uh, looked at that that's likely how the COVID-19 virus enters the respiratory tract in the lungs through the ACE2 receptor. And uh, we've also touched on ACE inhibitors and uh, angiotensin receptor blockers as well on previous sessions. But this is a natural killer to the ACE2 receptor. Uh, so pretty interesting. And they're also studying in that same study uh, uh, natural killer cells against interleukin-15. So we know 6, 15 uh, are involved in the, another uh, protein VEGF, uh, also involved, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, believe it or not, sildenafil, uh, Viagra, also known as Viagra, but uh, we use it in pulmonary hypertension as well, is being studied in Wuhan against COVID-19. I don't have too many details on that. HIV medications, uh, Ranavir and Cobisistat, sorry to my ID colleagues if I botched that, plus chloroquine um, is being studied in that combination. So an HIV combo plus chloroquine, a derivative of hydroxychloroquine, um, is being studied and all the patients um, are getting that. Uh, they all have to be positive for COVID-19, of course, and uh, they're also looking in that same study at prophylacting, prophylaxis for contacts uh, of patients uh, to the, to the COVID-19 virus. So um, that's interesting, and we can thank our, our Spa uh, Spain for that, our Spanish colleagues for that study. Lapinavir, ritinavir, uh, another uh, HIV cocktail versus hydroxychloroquine for mild uh, COVID-19 is being looked at in Korea. Remdesivir, uh, we've looked at. Um, there was some word that they were discontinuing it, but as of tonight, uh, again, March 28th, uh, it's still listed as an active recruiting study on the website, remdesivir for severe uh, versus standard of care, uh, whatever that means, uh, you know, standard of care right now is pretty much uh, the Wild West, and, and certainly we do supportive stuff with fluids and, and, and uh, prophylaxis, DVTs, and, and everything else, but uh, our standard of care right now is throwing you know, pretty much the kitchen sink at the severe patients in ARDS and the ICU, and they also have a moderate uh, study that did not, I saw, that did not require mechanical ventilation listed as well. Uh, in Wuhan, uh, China, an anti-VEGF monoclonal antibody, so another uh, a part of the storm that's occurring. This is an antibody against VEG, uh, VEGF. Uh, I'm going to botch this name, Vivacizumab. Sorry to my Himanka Hem colleagues on that one. Uh, so, uh, again, you know how we have uh, these proteins or these inflammatory mediators, and they have receptors on them, and these are monoclonal antibodies that are coming in to attach to those receptors so that the, the bad player or the, um, you know, the Pac-Man that's causing all the problems is knocked out. Uh, curiously, I get questions about stem cells a lot, just in, in the realms of COPD and emphysema. I tell patients, you know, uh, they want to know if they should take stem cells for COPD, and these are usually, you know, private companies. It's very expensive, and there's not a lot of clinical data on at least the pulmonary component. I know in cardiac and orthopedics, a lot more 
progressing. And what I tell them uh, with, with stem cells is, you know, uh, show me, uh, have, have a rep come in and talk to me. Let, let's see what the data looks like. Find out what your follow-up is going to be. That's just an aside for my emphysema patients with severe disease. But uh, this is actually a stem cell study coming out of Jordan for COVID-19. Uh, there's a MS drug called Fingolimod, or Fingolimod. Sorry to my neurology uh, uh, colleagues if I botched that. This is a Fingosinol uh, phosphate receptor regulator um, for multiple sclerosis, and that's being studied as well for um, for COVID-19. Steroids, big questions about that. Do they upregulate the ACE2 receptor um, that uh, we talked about with uh, how the natural killer cells are going to be studied to hit that? And, and you know, we've talked about um, maybe melatonin uh, helps, uh, maybe uh, uh, not taking uh, ibuprofen because ibuprofens like steroids are thought to maybe do this, upregulate. But they're actually studying methylprednisolone or solumedrol, which is kind of like prednisone. Uh, we use it in the IV form, mostly in the hospitals. Uh, in China, they're looking at that. And I don't believe those were patients that were already in ARDS, which is kind of how they're using it as a salvage. They're in ARDS at four or five days in that late phase. We are considering solumedrol or, or steroids for those patients, but um, everybody's proceeding with caution in regards to that. Uh, there were a couple vaccine trials listed, not many. I know we heard that a patient had been dosed over a week ago. Uh, with a vaccine, but really most of the studies were either uh, clinical trials for treatment uh, after you've developed the virus, uh, and uh, only one or two I saw there for vaccines. Maybe there was a third one, um, so I think that's important to note as well. And vitamin C, we all know that I'm into my vitamin C. Uh, I got my Fiji water tonight. I, I diluted more into the 700 ml bottle. It was a little bitter, uh, but I got my 3,200 milligrams, and there is actually my second bottle of that today. Uh, so I'm at 6,400 milligrams today and tolerating it just well from a GI standpoint, which, uh, you know, could mean that I need it. And uh, if I'm not uh, having problems GI-wise, then potentially my immune system is trying to tell me something. So I'm going to keep drinking up. But Italy, I'm proud to say, uh, is an, another trial that uh, vitamin C, uh, 10 grams daily. We talked about Wuhan, uh, about the Chinese study where they're, they're studying um, uh, 12 grams IV 12 or twice a day for a total of 24 grams, uh, but it, Italy has got a 10 gram study. And by the way, there are other studies that are going on besides these that are registered um, at hospitals that, you know, docs and researchers are, are performing that are not necessarily through clinicaltrial.gov. Um, so keep that in mind. I know we talked about uh, the Northwell system and, and how they were studying, I believe it was 1500 Q8. Um, so uh, at any rate, Italy is studying uh, vitamin C, 10 grams, IV, Q12 uh, versus, um, you know, what the Chinese are doing, which is, uh, which is more than double that. Uh, also in China, I saw a uh, favipiravir study, uh, another antiviral. Uh, that was uh, the one that Japanese had invented for influenza. Um, Stalmavir, Tamiflu, we've uh, had in the U.S. And now uh, there is... Uh, Favipiravir, again, to my ID colleagues, so, sorry if I botched that, but they're combining that with uh, teglizumab uh, in a clinical trial in China right now for COVID-19. Uh, nitric oxide, a uh, uh, revisit uh, in the ARDS picture, the acute respiratory distress syndrome uh, story, and um, that is being looked at. Uh, traditional Chinese medicine is actually being listed on that site as well towards the bottom of the recruitment, again, the 88 studies. And there was two others, baricitinib. Uh, and um, plasmab again, more of these amib, amab drugs that are also being studied. And that was pretty much it. Other than that, uh, there were um, uh, the rest of the studies, if they didn't involve treatment, they were looking at psychiatric and cardiac, echocardiograms, what's going on psychiatric uh, from a psychology standpoint, uh, which is obviously a very big market for the telemedicine aspect. I think, you know, pretty much all of the psych can be done, at least the outpatient stuff or most of it can be done via telemedicine. And um, uh, that is uh, being looked at as well. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, there was also registries that were being looked at and other basic stuff that didn't necessarily involve treatment. So with that said, I tried to keep it under 15 minutes to go through those 88 trials. I didn't get through all 88 of them, of course, but the ones that have medications tagged to them, aside from the vaccines I did discuss, and uh, again, even mentioned traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, for now, I would uh, just stay safe. Um, I'm going to keep drinking my diluted uh, Fiji water. 
maybe my red ginseng tea with licorice and tangerine peels. Everybody have a great night, and please stay well.